The presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Ashiwa Jubola Agma Tunubu, has announced former Borno State Governor, Senator Kashima Shatima, as his running mate for the 2023 general elections. He made his known in an interactive session with reporters when he said uh, he paid a Salah homage to the president, Muhammad Buhari, in Daura Kassina State. Uh, Alaji Kabiru Ibrahim Masari, whose name had earlier been submitted as a running mate, tendered his resignation in a letter to the party on Sunday. And Bola Tunibu was accompanied to Daura by Katsina State Governor Aminu Masari shortly after his aircraft landed the Umar Musa Yarodwa Airport in Katsina State. He briefed reporters about the choice after he closed a closed-door meeting that lasted about an hour uh, with the president. We have joining us this morning to make sense of all of this and understand uh, what's happening with the APC. Uh, Dr. Kach Onunuju, a political analyst. Dr. Kach Onunuju, thank you so much for uh, being part of the breakfast and being with us this morning. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for having me. Well, what do you really make of uh, the candidacy, I mean, the choice of the All Progressive Congress picking, uh, you know, the former governor of Boronu State? And a lot of persons are saying that it's highly insensitive, especially when you look at the fact that it's a Muslim, Muslim ticket that well, we're, you know, I going will... after. Yes, first, I will tell you that what we have is the case of insensitivity. Earlier, I did not believe there was a scheme to Islamize Nigeria, but now I'm beginning to believe that is so. Nigeria presently is a Christian majority country. It's also a heterogeneously diverse society. For any, can any ticket to think that in a Christian majority society that you could bring a Muslim Muslim ticket and not just anybody on the ticket. You're bringing Kashim Imam, who is known, I repeat, who is known to be the mastermind of Chibok girls kidnapping. It's either is a strategy to pay him for his work that helped the Buhari administration to get elected in 2015, or I will say that Bola Tinibu and those around him do not understand what's currently going on on the Nigerian streets. I do not know the mindset that drives his thoughts. But I can state now categorically that, that something is very, very wrong with the associations that I met Bolatini a Muslim is in that seems to decide and help him come up with his decisions. How can you, of all the Nigerians we have, be now willing to take the very man whom the office of the NSA and the office of the Minister of Education told not to go on with the examination in that school? He did go on. And on the time when he went on, the child of the head was not in the school. Not only that, the head teacher was also not in the school. The children were not taken away in a way that told you there was a premeditated strategy to actually take these children. And that became the 
the reasons for the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, which cast aspersions on President Goodlord Jonathan. At the end of the day, this same man went on to reward the principal who connived in that kidnap by appointing a uh, we sincerely apologize for all of the break in transmission. We still have Dr. Kach Onunuju, a political analyst, and what understanding the candidacy, uh, you know, pres vice presidential candidacy for the All Progressive Congress has been picked, a former governor of Borough State. And the fact that uh, with all of this, one would expect that. Any presidential candidate, anyone that aspires to become a governor of any state or, you know, aspires to uh, get through an elective office should understand the times that we are in. A very sensitive period, a period where it's like we're about to break off or break out and should consider anything that would bring us together. Uh, that's the focus. We do um, uh, have our guests joining us, trying to make sense of all of this. A Muslim, Muslim ticket, that's what it means for the All Progressive Congress ahead of the 2023 presidential elections. They're very big on the fact that, you know, the spirit of 1993 would be right upon them. But uh, are we in the same time? Dr. Katch, do we still have you on the phone? Yeah. Via Zoom, I beg your pardon. You have me, of course. Can you hear me? All right, then. So, but um, let's continue Are with you the. All right? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear now. Okay, I can hear you very well myself. So, so but let's continue in the light of this conversation. I mean, you have raised valid okay. points in all of this. You have talked about that we live in a time where it's very sensitive and we have never been divided. Uh, as we are right now and at the time. And uh, the expectation should be that everyone who vies for a political office or a position should consider uh, the current situation that we're faced with. But one of the excuse or reason for picking the former governor of Borough State is that if you look at, I mean, in a statement that's been, uh, that's been attributed to the former governor of Lagos State, has mentioned that we need to understand the challenge that is uh, upon us as a nation. And we need to, it's important that we look, you know, beyond all of the religious sentiment and we choose competence. So does this mean that we don't have competent people in other parts of the region? I mean, Christians who are competent, that's what it is. Does it mean that? No, 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 that's not it. I think the choosing of uh, Shetima was probably based on Shetima's appealing to the conscience of President Buhari to pay him back and show loyalty to the deal they have in Shetima helping to organize the kidnapping of the Chibok girls. Shetima believed the role he played in that kidnapping helped to make President Buhari president. So it is in a bid to pay back that Buhari was impressed upon to make that happen. But the dangerous part of it is this is also being pushed by Islamists. If I ever never believed that there was an intention to turn Nigeria from how it is right now, a Christian majority country based on the Gregorian calendar into an Islamic country, this is the reason. In a country where today you have more Christian governors, more Christians than Muslims, now doing a Muslim Muslim ticket. This is totally unexplainable. I can tell you the reasons for this is very simple. When the kidnap happened, it was because President Goodluck and his education ministry and the NSA wrote to Mr. Shetima, don't go on with the examination. 
Sheti Majid. At the time when the examination went on, there was no single security in the school. The child of the head teacher, who is the principal of the school, suddenly was missing from the school. The principal was also missing from the school. And after the kidnap, Shetima now rewarded the principal by appointing her as education ministry for the nation. Later on, that very action was now used as a campaign of Bring Back Our Girls. The Bring Back Our Girls campaign gave the world a very different impression about what really happened. President Buhari got elected that he owed Shetima some kind of IOU for his role in that Chibok kidnapping. For Shetima masterminding the Chibok kidnapping. Shetima went on to reward the principal of that school for her role in the kidnap by appointing her as commissioner for education. That silenced her, that kept her away from prying eyes. As I'm talking to you right now, there are more IDPs in Shetima's Boronu state than in any other state in Nigeria. Remember that his words, he is also a known. Boko Haram sympathizer. He interviewed some time ago, giving the world the reasons why he has been fending for the families of Boko Haram fighters. When he asked in an interview, why do you provide succor and financial aids to families of Boko Haram fighters? He said it is as a strategy to break the bond. But it's not true. It is not a strategy to break the bonds between the fighters and their families. Um, Dr. Katch... It is simply to tell you that the Boko Haram is simply a foot arm Dr. used by politicians to score. We have now a full understanding of that. In the APC government, which you formed with President Buhari, you saw how they started taking in the Boko Haram fighters, reforming them, giving them employment before they will give graduates from Nigerian universities employment. Dr. Kachun, Dr. Kachun, no, 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 no. Are you saying that all of this, I mean, this... Before uh, they will integrate Nigerians in the army. Are these things that you have mentioned, I mean, they are very serious... Uh, you know, points that you have raised right here. And in all of this description, it suits one who is actually in support of, you know, terrorist and uh, activities of terrorism. And that's what, that's what your description suits of Shatima. And if that's anything to go by, how come he's not been arrested? And how come if he has done all of these things that you have mentioned, uh, the Nigerian government has not arrested him. He's not has not been uh, been prosecuted. He's not been behind bars. I mean, I'm looking for the adjectives and words to qualify all of this. How come he's on the list for uh, you know the ASPC? I mean, he's been considered a candidate worthy of being picked for the vice presidential position ahead of the elections 2023. I'm saying that if all these things is anything to go by, I mean, this is really true. Then then why are we here? in the public space. These are things that he said with his own mouth and he was record of the interviews. These things are known to Nigerians across the country. You're asking why is it not being punished for this known facts? You will also, I will ask you why 
are the Boko Haram people, not trains, who shoot down the Alphines in Kaduna, who seize Nigerians, and even the ones who break into Kujé prison. Why are they not torn? Those terrorists who also attack the Nigerian Defense Academy, why are they not touched? Why is there a standing order given to the not to lay hands on? Do you think that the army is incapable? You Dr. Um, Kachanuju, uh, we apologize for being unable to uh, have this conversation. Um, we will hope that we have this conversation some other time, uh, Dr. Kach. It's unfortunate that the network has not been very friendly this morning. But uh, some of the points that you have raised are very sensitive. I mean, you know, it constantly just shows... Uh, it's a pointer to the fact that those who constantly have said that the Nigerian government is an accomplice to what's going on in Nigeria is just evident. And so if you have a man who has stated all of this and these things uh, have been put out there, one would expect that there should be some form of investigation. Let's even assume that the government has said this is an allegation. And if one has been accused, let's put it at the position of the fact that he's been accused and he's been accused of sponsoring, abating, uh, conniving and supporting uh, terror and the act of terrorism, then he should have been under you know, some level of investigation. But it doesn't really, really look like that's what's going on uh, with the government. It feels like the government has not been uh, you know, open that particular part to say we're investigating uh, him. And it's quite unfortunate that in all of the candidates that would have been picked, and we're looking at you know, the elections now, that uh, uh, you know, the APC would consider uh, picking one who has been described it's, 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 it's as good as saying he's a terrorist with all of the description and all of the things that's been said. It's as good as saying that to become a vice presidential candidate for a ruling party. And what that also means is that you're going to be having a Muslim Muslim ticket at a time where um, you have uh, a lot of religious consents and sentiment that has been put out. But that's it. Thank you so much, Dr. Kach Nunuchu. That's it. We we'll definitely. Uh... Can you hear us, Dr. Kach? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So I was about to, you know, call it a wrap right here, unfortunately. But let's just have you continue with your thoughts as we progress. Okay. You can see where our country is right now. We are at a crossroad. There is a struggle between the Islamic fundamentalists fronted and supported by Buhari and those who intend to make the Nigerian experiment successful. The appointment of Mr. Shetima is purely a payback for his work in kidnapping the Chibok girls. He has, this is also the same way that he rewarded the school principal who cooperated with him in the kidnap by appointing her commission of education. So federally, the Buhari administration is now also appointing him as vice presidential candidate in a way to show appreciation for his role in staging that kidnapping. Now, you can also tell yourself, he's not the only one doing this thing. From the kidnap in Chibok to the kidnap in Kankara, to the subsequent kidnappings across the north, to the prison break that flooded our bushes with cannibals 
and those who agree to commit violent actions against Nigerians in a way we've never seen before. Take, for instance, in Eastern Nigeria. There have been no cases of cannibalism in over 200 years. And yet, as Buhari became president, and there was no single report of prison break in 16 years of the PDP rule, Buhari became president, and we had had up to eight, eight prison breaks, which now provided the government with a lot of, of workers who started cannibalizing Nigerians, killing Nigerians, because the government promised the British government that they will manufacture evidence to validate their assertion that there was a case of terrorism in Eastern Nigeria. After one year of that action, the British government were not convinced, despite having the greatest protocols for gathering intelligence in Nigeria. And that was why you saw the Home Office report that said that the Easterners were not involved in terrorism. The people involved in terrorism, in shooting down the Alpha Jets, in kidnapping soldiers at the NDA, in blowing up trains from Kaduna to uh, Abuja rail line, in killing people, nobody has touched them. Yet where they stay, from the bushes of Brinwari to the bushes of Kagara, from the bushes of Giwa to the bushes of Pandagari, to the forces of Dogongona at the back of Alawa, at the back of Pandagari, at the back of Brinwari, from where they come to see citizens traveling along the Kaduna Abuja road. Nobody has touched them. Even the terrorists that were put in Kuja prison, none of them was ever taken to a court of law. They have just been given back in a bid between the government and the government terrorists as a strategy to release the people abducted from the train. You notice, after the government removed soldiers that were guarding the Kuja prison, Within 24 hours, the terrorists stop Kuja prison. And they removed their own terrorists who were in cell, who have been in cell. None of them have been brought before a court of law. If this government protects terrorists, but then go after people who never killed a rat and tell the world that they should be given time to manufacture evidence. The reason is why you have seen no more terrorism and actions of violence in eastern Nigeria is because the British Home Office document came out to say that they did not find the Easterners involved in terrorism. That was why the government has stopped its force flag actions in the east. That is why you see the staging of terrorism actions in eastern Nigeria has stopped. Because the government has found out that the world is not buying their story. When you call a man a terrorist where he has not killed a foul, the onus becomes on you to go and manufacture evidence to substantiate and validate your assertion. That was what the government did. I was known, I was in the know. That was why I traveled to the East. And I stayed at Rosby Hotel. I saw what happened at the police headquarters for two hours, 20 minutes. The operation went on. There was no reaction from the army, no reaction from the police, no reaction from DSS. This tells you how very bad this government is. Today we have soldiers being kidnapped and killed, and the government doesn't do anything. 
We have the train being blown up on Kaduna Abuja route. The government doesn't do anything. We have Alpha Jet being shut down in Kampala. The government doesn't do anything. And yet, these terrorists are not staying in bushes. All you need to do is put up drones. A drone upstairs or two, two drones in the air will simply tell you where the people are. Governor Erifai said, we know where they are. We listen to their phone calls. But when we beg that government should do something, the soldiers are supposed to stay hand because of the way the government acts to protect the terrorists. So all you have to understand is that the terrorists are being used as a reserve army. The same people who operated in our war. We are speaking Bambara. That was why the governor of all those states said that these people were from Mali. They were borrowed of Polanyi from Mali. That's why you see these higher ships are not Nigerian. They came over from Mali due to the fight between the Dogon and the Polanyi in central Mali. Dr. Kajanunuju... Uh, let's quickly, right as we point. begin to coast this conversation down now, I mean, let's look at his capacity as, uh, you know, as a person to perform, I mean, or function in that capacity of becoming the vice president of a country, understanding the functions uh, of a vice president in Nigeria. Do you think that he has what it takes? Some people have pointed to the fact that at the time as a governor of uh, the state, uh, you could see that there was, you know, significant improvement, especially in the educational sector uh, as a governor where he was. So do, do you think that, you know, capacity-wise, he has what it takes to become uh, a vice president of a country? And that's why he's been picked. He does because not have it. If you listen to the published conversation between the same man, and Idukula and Muslim, you will understand that man doesn't have the capacity to act as president of Nigeria. Whoever is taken as vice president should also be good for president. The mind's mindset, as explained in that recorded conversation, does not defeat that of a person fit for the office of vice president or president of Nigeria. I am talking about the recorded telephone conversation by this same term that you now call a vice presidential candidate. All this tells you that the APC administration does not mean well for the Nigerian administration for the Nigerian experiment, for the Nigerian project, for the Nigerian nation, for our quest towards nationhood. We will never get there if we take people like this. These things I didn't make up. I am referring to the recorded telephone conversation between this particular man, Shetima, and Governor Bukula Musa. This is what we are talking about. These records are available in the public domain. Yet, the APC is behaving as if they will simply read and the citizens will just keep quiet. It was okay for Nigeria to keep quiet before, but I know that will not happen again. We are not determined to take back our country. So give chance to the Nigerian experiment and not to allow Islamic fundamentalists to appropriate our country. Mr. Shetima is not fit to be trusted with a national assignment in a diversified and heterogeneous Nigeria. So I say. Well, 
Uh, Dr. Katz, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate all of the points and insights that you have raised this morning uh, on the show, and we say thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you. Uh, we've been speaking with Dr. Kach Onunuju, who is a political analyst, and uh, we have been looking at the candidacy of, uh, you know, the vice presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress has been picked by uh, the former governor of Lagos State and the flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Tunubu, and all of the concerns around it. I mean, that's it this morning on The Breakfast, uh, who definitely come back tomorrow with more interesting uh, conversations, raising uh, issues that would interest you right here. We'll take a break. When we return at the hour of nine o'clock will be time for the news. Please stay with us. Now, if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it would be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic Monday morning. Happy holiday.